Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal Mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, Grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Acts. When the captain and the temple police had brought the apostles, they had them stand before the council. The high priest questioned them, saying, We gave you strict orders not to teach in his name, yet here you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and you are determined to bring this man's blood on us. But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than any human authority. The God of our ancestors raised up Jesus, whom you had killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior that he might give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things. And so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Please join me in reciting Psalm 150 by whole verse. Hallelujah. Praise God in his holy temple. Praise him in the fulfillment of his power. Praise him. Praise him with the blast of the ram's horn. Praise him with lyra in harps. Praise him with the voice of praise. Praise him with the voice of praise. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Praise him with loud clanging cymbals. Hallelujah. Reading from the book of Revelation. John to the seven churches that are in Asia. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood, and made us to be a kingdom, priests serving his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And on his account, all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come. The Almighty, the Word of the Lord. Please rise for the reading of the gospel. This is the holy gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, Put my finger in the mark of the nails, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, 
But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Abide in me, Lord Christ, and I in you. Amen. Please be seated. Those of you who have had children or been around uh, uh, friends or family that have had children and have watched that process of when they are wee little babes and how they develop uh, throughout those early months and years and then, of course, the older they get, um, have observed uh, what science would, would say and has told us for, for many, many years um, that the bond that is developed um, early on um, is crucial, is, is utterly necessary to allow the child to thrive. Because if, they're not connect, if they don't connect and attach with a caregiver, then that relationship doesn't have a chance to build and their development is, is, is stunted or, or lackluster at the very least. And it has a continuing effect throughout their life. I think a somewhat recent, although there may be another term for it by now, um, uh, is that the child needs to become attached to uh, a caregiver. Um, and, and it starts small, right, as their world is small, and then it starts to grow, and out of that healthy attachment and relationship and bond, then they can thrive and build as their world gets larger. Now that continues throughout their life. A prerequisite for that, though, before that bond can happen, at the very basic element, there is trust that has to develop first, related to safety essentially, and having their needs met. This takes a lot of time and certainly a lot of practice. And sometimes we as parents, I can speak for myself, are better at it than others. But you just keep trying, you just keep practicing, and, and um, you know, these things with that eventually happen. And of course, you have to continue doing this. So as the kids get older, even to our own age up now and, and beyond, um, you know, it looks a little different to maintain that trust and to maintain that relationship. Um, but underneath all of that is trust and that there's safety first and that gives you a sense of trust. And then all of these things can take and build and take root from there. So when I was looking um, at a little bit of commentary related to our scripture this morning, um, it was related to the idea of believing and trusting. And it made me think about the ways in which we experience trust and how that's a different, it kind of comes from a different place in our body uh, than um, believing, which tends to be more sort of an intellectual experience, whereas a trust is something that comes out of our heart. All right, And so I thought it was interesting that while we have generally in the English has translated the Greek word from believe, right, which is a lot of what Jesus is talking about to Thomas this morning, right, is that for you, you know, blessed are those who believe without seeing. He's trying to get Thomas to believe, and Thomas wants to believe, but he's not really quite sure about that, um, as we just heard. So that word believe the Greek root behind it is pist. So it can actually, while we see it as faith, right, or for a noun, or believe as a verb, it has, a, a, it, when you look at the Greek um, uh, root to it, it has also the concept of trust, right? And so um, it can be used as, as a verb and as a noun. Okay, and so when you think about the range of what trust means, you can trust in something or someone, 
you are relying on something or someone. That's another um, translation for the word, uh, the Greek root peace. Or believing something is true. And like I said, generally in English, we translate it as believing. But I think it's, it's interesting to think about reading that scripture and putting trust in the places of belief, right? Because I think it gives us a different access from our head down to our heart, all right? And our heart oftentimes is what influences our thoughts and our action, all right? So just give me a, a, a moment here and listen to how the gospel would sound, a little portion of it, when Jesus is talking to Thomas. If we were to say trust rather than believe and um, substitute those words in, knowing that they come from the same place at the Greek root, feast. Jesus' words to Thomas, do not be distrusting, but trusting. Are you trusting because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have yet have come to trust. And then it goes on a few verses later. The purpose of the gospel is written so that you might come to trust that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through trusting you may have life in his name. It's an essential piece, you could argue, uh, to have that trust, to have that bond, as we talked about with raising children, and also to follow Jesus in this way, because it, it leads to other things. It leads to uh, the life of reconciliation that our colleague talks about this morning, that I believe is Jesus's, is God's dream for the world. So that's how Jesus responded. And it's interesting that we have from um, our world, what do we usually know as Thomas as, right? Anyone remember? Doubting, yeah, doubting Thomas, right? That's the sort of the classical quintessential word that we, adjective that we put also with Thomas, okay? And from a human perspective, if you think about it, his fellow disciples, it makes sense because here they are, they're counting on each other. So it's almost as if he is doubting them. He's not believing their experience. These are people who are counting on each other. They're locked away in a room. They're utterly dependent upon each other. People are pursuing them. Their lives are at risk, and they are counting on each other to find their way post-resurrection, as we would say, into this new life that Jesus has ushered them into. So they kind of got a lot riding on each other. They need each other to step in and do their part. So yeah, I can see why they'd be like, ugh, God, doubting Thomas. You can see sort of where that idea would come up and how it would be understandable and worrisome. That's the human part, and that's definitely real. I think, though, it's interesting to think about Jesus who approaches Thomas on a completely different level. Because I think this could also be read where Jesus meets Thomas right where he is. He doesn't berate him. He doesn't shame him. He doesn't roast him, as my kids would say as of late. We have a lot of fun roasting each other, apparently. It's, yeah. No, they don't do that. Jesus doesn't do that to Thomas. He rather simply comes, finds him a week later, we're told, and says, here I am, feel my hands, feel my side. It's me. I'm not going to shame you. I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm going to do the same for you that I did for my other disciples, that I did for you and your followers. I think this is such an example of how Jesus built trust with his disciples and his followers all along. He met them right where they were. He pushed them, yes, absolutely, at times, but he also had such grace to meet them where they were, without shame or blame or embarrassment. That was so much his life, and it happens and it continues even beyond the grave. And so it makes sense when we get to those closing verses. Now Jesus did 
many other signs in the presence of the disciples which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to trust that Jesus is the Son of, is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through trusting you may have life in his name. All along he's been developing that trust for them, which is leading to the safety that they feel because he's asking them to do a lot. He's asking them to give their lives at times. It's where it ends for many of them. He's asking, he's setting them up so that they can trust his love and trust who he is is real and that this is the Messiah, that they can then out of that risk to do all of the things that he is calling them to do, that they can risk to thrive and live and become the kingdom, Jesus' kingdom, that he's talking about, that he dreams about, that God dreams about, that they can continue to carry that on. It's a huge, huge risk. But he's taught them how to do it from a place of safety, which hopefully will build their confidence and their ability to see what can happen when they can trust that Jesus is the Messiah. You are my Messiah. You are my Lord. And so that brings us to today and the ways that we can trust each other, God, ourselves. And that's my prayer, that we can continue to find ways to do that, to trust all of those pieces of our life, because when they come together, we are able to be bolder, we are able to live more deeply. And we are able to take that Holy Spirit that Jesus breathed on those disciples so many centuries ago and be empowered by that to go out and continue to do the work that the disciples started in that upper room when they were beyond scared, locked away, afraid to live. But they found a way out. And I think it is from the trust and the love that Jesus nurtured in them all along. May it be so this day and always. Amen. So speaking, speaking of trust and belief, as we just were, you'll notice we're about to say the Nicene Creed, and I'll invite you to do that. Where are you all going? <laughs> no, you're, just put your, we're, we did that part. Just have a seat for me. Just put your candle back. Just put your, we're not ready yet. You're jumping ahead. Just sit down. You got it. Thank you. Okay. That's a new one for me. All right. Um, trust and belief. So I'll invite you to stand up. Uh, as we reaffirm our faith, you will notice that we start off with the word we believe. And um, I'm not saying that you have to change it uh, by any means, but I do think it's an interesting exercise to think and wonder about what it would be like if you said, in your heart or mind, you know, we trust in God. We trust in the one Lord Jesus Christ. Just think about the difference of where that puts you in what space as you're saying those words as we make our way um, through the Nicene Creed together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Wait, what's wrong with you people? Stand up. Stand up. You're distracting people only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he came incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. 
for our Prayers of the people. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, especially Bishop Michael Curry and Bishop Paulson Reed. That, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nation of the world, especially President Joe Biden, Governor Kevin Stitt, and Mayor Stan Booker. That, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, especially Al, Aunt Amanda, Amber, Ann, Andy, Blake W., Bob, Bobby, Buck, Caroline, Danny, David, Ed, Fred, Helen, Jean, Jerry L., Joe, Joe H., John L., June, Catherine, Kathleen, Larry, Leo, Lucille, Mary R., Maz Family, Pat, Pat B., Pat Y., Rose, Sandra, Sherry, and Vicki, for the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison, and those in the military, that Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May they also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others, especially thanksgivings for anniversaries for George and Deborah Flores. For those in the path of violence, especially in Ukraine. For those who suffer with addiction, and those who care for them. For caregivers, teachers. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please rise. Oh, I need my ribbon. <laughs> the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. <laughs> Welcome, 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 everyone. Please be seated. You made it through the storm last night. Uh, I haven't, yeah, that was memorable. Um, it's wonderful to see you all this morning. Uh, a couple of uh, announcements, reminders. Um, if 
you would like to receive the communion today, everyone is welcome to do that. You just simply put your hands out uh, and for the bread and guide the cup of wine to your lips if you wish, or you can intink the bread. Um, you may also uh, receive a blessing and just put your arms over your chest and uh, I'll know to do that in that fashion. Um, a couple other things, we have a reception today. After a blessing, we are blessing Jeannie and Roy's um, marriage legally in Arkansas. When was that? What, what day? Was it February? March 4th. Okay, I couldn't remember if it was February or early March. So March 4th in Arkansas. So you are invited to join them for reception. We're going to be blessing their marriage, uh, and then there'll be cake and champagne. So that'll be in the parish hall, which is just on the other side here. Um, you can find your way around the hallway there. Um, that's one thing I want to remind you all about. And then there's pledges in the back, your quarterly statements for people who pledge. You can pick one up. It has your name on it just to see where you are. Um, we're trying to save some money on stamps, so grab that if you um, happen to think of it. Is there anything else? I think those were the two things that I had. So, okay, then let us celebrate the Eucharist together. It's wonderful to be with you all this morning. Ascribe unto the Lord the honor due God's name. Bring offerings and come into God's courts. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly right and good and joyful to give you, all holy God, source of life and fountain of mercy. You have filled us in all creation with your blessing and fed us with your constant love. 
You have redeemed us in Jesus Christ and knit us into one body. Through your spirit, you replenish us and call us to fullness of life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the faithful of every generation, we lift our voices with all creation as we sing.
And all these things shall be added unto you. Thank you. 